What's up, party people, and welcome back to my channel. So I do sound a little sick today because I am a little sick today, but you know what? It's a day off, and I'm taking full advantage of it. I got a lot of videos I want to film, so we are getting started regardless of the situation. So today is all about products I regret buying, disappointing products, product fails, however you wanna look at it. These are products that did not work out for me. I really enjoy doing these videos because there are a lot of products that I try that I do not end up liking. And a lot of these products are kind of updates because I've talked about them before, but like when I talked about them, I maybe didn't have a firm grasp on them. So these are some updates. And some of these products are ones that you've never heard of or have seen on my channel before. So that's fun too. So the first thing I have is a moisturizer. This is the Saturday Skin Waterfall Glacier Water Cream. I believe this is like $29 or something like that at Sephora. This is just a gel moisturizer, which typically I like gel moisturizers. And just for reference, I do have oily combination skin. I get oily in my T-zone. This was just one of those products that that never really sank in and it's one of those gel formulas that just sits on top of your skin and feels really heavy and it makes your skin feel hot I don't know why if you guys have witnessed that before with gel products or any product let me know because I feel like that's a really weird way of explaining it but that's how it feels like it just feels like your skin is just sticky and hot at first it feels pretty nice like it feels pretty moisturizing especially for a gel there are some moisturizers that you know you wake up and your skin's really soft and hydrated and glowy this just does nothing for me in fact my skin still feels sticky the next morning i just put it on my hand and even my hand feels like sticky and thick and greasy Ugh. The next thing I have is a random micellar water. So this is the Bare Minerals Mineral Cleansing Water with Cucumber and Rose. So I don't think this is a very popular product or anything, but it's something I got my hands on. So I've used this for my eyes and my face and it literally does not take off anything. If you have waterproof mascara or something on, forget about it. I just kind of resorted to using it as a cleanup product like using it to clean up my eyeshadow or something like that but even like just fall out on my face like when I don't even have face makeup on just like debris from the eyeshadow it doesn't even want to take that off it just smears it around and smudges it and I have to kind of pull and tug and that's just not good for your skin so this thing is not worth the money I don't know who was testing this and who was putting this through the ringer before they released it but that that position needs to be rethought because this stuff is horrible and just kind of stick into the micellar makeup remover kind of thing this is the rimmel just let it go gentle eye makeup remover and this is another product that does not remove your makeup very well um but other than that it just burns my eyes really bad which is weird because it's called a gentle eye makeup remover and it doesn't feel gentle and it burns and it doesn't remove your makeup so again, I just kind of started using it to remove like fallout and stuff or clean up a wing line. Even just being kind of close, like just kind of close to your eyes or to mine anyway, it burns my eyes. So yeah, and it says removes waterproof mascara. Don't think so. Next thing I have is a Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. So I actually am wearing it on this eye right now. I just did a dupe video with it. This just doesn't impress me. Like this is just one of those popular hyped up products that I just don't understand the hype in. I like the wand. It's a nice like hourglass shape. Um, it's really good for like, I don't know, just hugging your lashes really well. So I do like the, the bristles and the wand on it, but the formula is what gets me. So today I feel like I did get more out of it than I ever had before, but it's one of those formulas that flakes and smudges and smears on me really bad. Next thing I have is the Urban Decay 24 seven glide on eye pencil. This is something I've talked about before. I've talked about my dislike for this product numerous times, but just kind of reiterate it. And just because I wanted to fill this video up with as much negativity as possible this thing is so bad like i remember a time when this was a good product like when eyeliners like across the board were just horrible this was the one that kind of stood out amongst the crowd like this is the one that everyone talked about this was huge back in the day like early early youtube um number one it's just not super richly pigmented and that's a swatch like you're applying a lot more pressure in a hand swatch it's just not super creamy it doesn't glide on super well even though it's called glide on eye pencil i just feel like it kind of tugs it's very stiff it's just a very faint black it's not a really rich jet black which is what i look for i actually do have another urban decay product this is the urban decay perversion mascara this is just a little trial size it's just a very fluffy standard i don't know kind of old school full wand. This mascara just made my lashes look very puny. It just didn't really do me any favors. I look for volume, length, 
thickness, fullness, basically the whole shebang. Like I want something to give me that false lash effect and this just didn't do it for me. Now I will say if you like a natural mascara, like you don't really need a whole lot of those things, this would be an okay mascara for you. But I have mascaras that are under like the $10 mark that work way better than this. So the next thing I have is something that I really wanted to like. Like this was a pretty popular product and it still is pretty hyped up. And I like I waited on the website so long to get this because I was so excited and just so Sure that this would be an amazing product for me because it's amazing for other people This is the jcat beauty aqua assurance powder foundation. This is supposed to be a full coverage hydrating powder foundation It's not supposed to be like your typical powder foundation. That's masky and thick and heavy and just gross on the skin um but it is those things for me. I will say that you can get pretty good coverage out of this. I can build this up to almost full coverage. It feels very, very buttery and soft to the touch. But every time I've worn this, I've been very dissatisfied with it. I've used it as a powder foundation on its own. I've used it to set my under eye concealer or to set just parts of my face. And every time I wear it, I end up feeling dry and tight and cakey. And earlier today, I just kind of threw this on with a primer and some moisturizer underneath. Just, I just want to have something on for a video. And I had to take it off as soon as I, I was done with that video because my skin felt like it was being like tugged from behind. Like it was just like, imagine your face going like this. That's how my skin felt. So next thing I have is another moisturizer. So this is the Estee Lauder Day Wear Antioxidant 72 Hour Hydration Sorbet Cream with SPF 15. That is a very long winded name. I don't really have a problem with what it does for my skin, like as far as the effect that it gives. Like it does make me feel fairly hydrated. Um, it does have SPF 15, which SPF 15 is just kind of useless in my book. But my problem with this is the smell. The smell will knock you over. It is so potent and I just don't understand putting fragrance in any product because that is like the biggest marketing gimmick in my book because we smell something and if it smells good to us, we buy it. But smell in makeup products or in skincare products doesn't last. So what's the point? Like it's literally just something to captivate you. Like it does nothing. Like it has no purpose in the effect or the function of the product. It almost smells like Dove hand soap or something or what's just a really cheap, old fashioned like bar soap or something like it's not even a subtle fragrance and I'm not someone that's super sensitive to fragrance or anything like I'm not someone that steers away from everything if it has a fragrance to it but this is so strong that even I'm steering away from this one and I just wouldn't recommend it for that because fragrance especially something this strong is gonna be so irritating to the skin and it's just not necessary. Next thing I have is something that I just recently talked about in my testing high-end makeup video. This is the Anastasia Waterproof Cream Color in the shade Jet. I've probably only had this for a matter of maybe eight or nine months and this dried out within like one or two months and I actually do store this upside down. That's what they say to like that's how they say to store your gel liners to kind of keep them hydrated and fresh and it's still dried out and the only way I can revive this is by taking a tissue or something like wiping off the surface and using a lot of product, like wasting a lot of product to do that. It used to be like when I first bought it, it was brand new. It was really creamy and jet black. It glided on, it stayed all day long, didn't smear, smudge, transfer, nothing. It was legit the epitome of what I was looking for. Now I just don't have the patience or the time or the excuse left in me to make it for this. The next thing I have is the Wet n Wild H2O Proof Liquid Liner. So this is just like three or four dollars at the drugstore. And this was actually recommended to me by my cousin because she will send me makeup pictures of her eyes and stuff. And like, I've, I was just like, whoa, what kind of eyeliner are you wearing? It's so black, it's so rich. And that's, again, that's what I'm looking for. I just, I cannot find that. And she said, this is what she used. And it's not your typical felt tip or brush tip. It's very hard. I mean, I guess it is more of like a felt tip. It's a very fat, chunky felt tip. And again, this goes into how people have different personal preferences and also different skill sets. Like, I'm not very good at liner. I am on a struggle bus the entire time I'm doing my eyeliner. But like my cousin, her liner always looks bomb. Like she is amazing at liner. So it is a very rich jet black formula for the most part. But my problem comes with the applicator because it's so chunky up and down. Like there's no fine tip really to it like it's just it's hard for me a novice at liner to work with this i will say i have a very hard time getting it off it does not want to come off let's test the bare minerals micellar cleansing water i just have a baby wipe here that's dry so let's go over here it doesn't want to budge any kind of makeup remover should remove it effortlessly 
without me scrubbing the crap out of my skin. Okay, I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else to talk about before I move on to the very last product that is a very unpopular opinion. But I don't think there's anything to cushion it with, so I guess we, we're talking about it. So, I can't do it. The Morphe James Charles palette. I've played with this thing so many times and every single time I've played with it since I filmed the first video, I've hated my life so much. But I did film an entire video where I, I actually did two looks with this. Like I did a neutral look and then a, a pop of color neon look. But in that video, I actually had an easier time working with the neons than the neutrals, which was so shocking to me because I felt like the, the neutrals in here would be the one reason why I actually would use this palette. But because I'm relying on the neutrals in here to make this palette worth the money for me, it's just not worth it because they don't work very well. That day that I sat down to film that video, like I really took my time. Like I wasn't in a hurry. I really tried to make it work just because I knew that so many people, or I thought so many people would come at me saying, you rushed or you threw it together or you slapped them on and didn't take your time. You, you didn't want the palette to work. So I really, went out of my way to try as hard as I could to make it work. But it just takes me so long to create a look with this. And there is such a big consistency issue with this palette, like the shimmers in here, very lackluster, very sheer, not buttery or pigmented or soft. And I'm already getting hard pan on several of the shimmers in here, which not a good sign. Some of the mattes work better than others, but like the neutral mattes, they suck. I don't know. What do you guys think about this palette? Do you guys agree with me? If not, please let me know. Um, let me know if there's a certain way that you found to make it work. Like if you have these issues, what did you do to correct them? Or if you have these issues and you just gave up like me. Just to a point where I'm so tired of making excuses for products that just aren't amazing. Like I feel like there's so many products coming out all the time. I just don't have time or money or patience to recommend mediocre products. Like I will not condone and support a mediocre product. Like if I support something and recommend something to you guys, it's because it's amazing and I firmly believe in it. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big old thumbs up and also go ahead and comment below hashtag party people to let me know that you're part of my party people squad and also to let me know if you made it this far into the video. If you did, Thank you for sticking with me and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell to be notified of all my videos so that you never miss one. And I will see you guys in my next one. Mwah.